Okay, hopefully you can all see me. If not, let us know in uh, the chat box or something. Um, we're gonna get started. Um, I'll introduce myself. I am Chris Bruno. I am one of the early childhood educators at the St. Louis Zoo, um, and I'm hosting you from my home today, of course. Um, and I'm pretty sure we have people joining us from all over the place. Um, but I'm also joined by my coworker Kelsey, who's kind of behind the scenes. Um, if all goes well, she'll stay behind the scenes, but she's helping out with the uh, technological and computer side of things. Um, so she may be answering your questions in the chat if I. I'm not able to answer them on screen or the Q&A. Um, so you'll see her name and she is also an awesome educator at the St. Louis Zoo, so you can trust her responses too. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping things to go over. This is geared towards younger kids, sort of preschool to first grade-ish, um, but if you have a bigger kid around um, or parents or grown-ups are around, you're welcome to listen in. I think there will be some fun stuff for anybody. Um, and we will have a couple polls and chances to submit questions. Um, so if you have a bigger kid around or a grown up with you, that might be helpful too, so that you can put your questions in. Uh, if you have a question related to our topic today, uh, then that would be best to put in the Q&A section. Um, and if I'll try to answer it, if there are lots of questions, I might not get to all of them, but we will do our best. Um, and if it's just a comment or something like that, or your response to one of my questions, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to mention. Oh, if you could in the chat, if you're able to put in where you are watching from and how many people you're watching with. We would love to see who else joining us for Zoolympics today. Um, so if you are wanting to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time, this is the Zoolympics webinar. And I'm um, just making sure I get everything else on. We also will be hosting more live webinars you may have seen the st louis zoo has lots um, already out for people of all different ages and we're hoping to do a lot more and soon we'll be releasing a lot of um, other online content that's available for activities projects things you can do in your backyard so definitely follow the st louis zoo on uh, social media or check out our website frequently so that you can see all the awesome offerings that we have and I think we are ready to jump in and get started. All right, so the idea today is Zoo Olympics, of course. You may have heard of the Olympics, uh, which are sports related and happen every couple of years and bring people together from all over the world to see who's the best at different events like sprinting and swimming and gymnastics and long jump and things like that. So the first thing I want you guys to do is think about if you were going to be in the Olympics, it doesn't have to be sports related or even physical related, what event would you be in that you're really good at? And if you'd like to share that in the chat or just kind of say it out loud to the screen. I honestly haven't thought about the question myself about what I would choose. Um, that's what, yeah, I haven't put enough thought. I should have answered my own question, but I'm very curious to see what you guys think you're good at. And today we're going to learn about what different animals are really good at. So we have a lot of cool animals to show you, just pictures, unfortunately, um, but hopefully it'll still be really cool for you. And there will be a couple times where you guys can kind of participate a little bit with those polls. And in one category, you guys get to be the judge. So in some Olympic events, there are judges who have to decide who wins. It's not necessarily who gets to the finish line fastest. So you guys are, when you answer the poll, are going to be able to choose the winner of one of our categories. So our first event today is speed, the fastest animal. So I'm going to show three animals for each of our categories and that way we will have a gold medal first place winner, a silver medal second place winner, and a bronze medal third place winner. Okay, so for this first category, our first animal is a cheetah. And this picture is not blurry because your screen is having problems. It's a blurry picture because that cheetah is moving so fast. And we have lots of cheetahs at the St. Louis Zoo and the keepers have lots of spaces so that they can definitely do their running and they have special activities that they have them do to use those running muscles. So that's one of our choices. And then our next choice for fastest animal 
is a bird called a peregrine falcon. They're a bird of prey, which means they don't eat seeds or fruit. Usually they eat other creatures, other animals. So that's another choice for our fastest animal. And then our last choice is the black marlin. It's a kind of fish, you might have guessed it was a swordfish based on that big long beak it has sticking out at the front, but it's called a black marlin. So I want you to think about which of those animals you think would be the fastest animal and you're gonna get to choose in our poll. So Kelsey's gonna put the poll up um, and I will tell you the first letter of each choice. So the top choice is the cheetah, which starts with C. So if you want to pick cheetah, pick the C circle there. And then our second choice is the falcon. That starts with F. So if you think that's the fastest, pick the middle choice, the F choice. Or you can pick the M, which is the bottom choice for the marlin. So I'm going to count down from five in just a moment to see, to finish out our poll. And then we'll see what you guys chose. So five. Four, three, two, get your answers in if you haven't already. One, all right. And Kelsey will show us the answers, or the, so the results of our poll, I should say. Ah, a lot of people picked the cheetah, which doesn't surprise me at all, especially since I showed you that blurry picture. And a couple people picked the falcon and nobody picked the marlin. Awesome, well, I'm gonna reveal the results of who actually is the fastest animal. So our bronze medal goes to the cheetah, actually, but you guys who picked the cheetah are partly right because the cheetah is the fastest animal on land. So they're the fastest runners. So you were kind of right, but they're not the fastest animal. And I apologize, I have to get out of screen for just a moment because I dropped one of my pictures. Okay, so the silver medal goes to that black marlin because they are the fastest in the water. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that cheetahs can run as fast as a car on the highway. So if you were driving to grandma's house or something, a cheetah could keep up with you on the highway, but only for a short period of time because they can't run that fast for very long. Now marlins can swim up to about 80 miles per hour, which is even faster than we usually go on the highway. And then, believe it or not, the gold medal winner is that peregrine falcon because they dive down up to 200 miles an hour, which I think is about as fast as those bullet trains, um, the super, super fast trains that they have. Now, I want you to think about why it might be that a peregrine falcon has to dive down that fast. Hmm might have something to do with their food. So I know I told you that they don't eat fruits and seeds, which would just sit there and wait to be caught. Um, but they have to go that fast because they might try to catch a bird or a mouse or something that can scurry along the ground. So they have to dive down super duper fast to catch their food before it scurries away. All right, so that was our first category. And our next event is going to be the high jump. So we're going to see which animals can jump the highest. And if you guys would like, if you have a little space around whatever you're watching from, uh, stand up and I'll count to three and jump as high as you can. But please be careful. I don't want any injuries. All right. So I'm going to count to three and jump as high as you can. One, two, three. All right. Now, you probably got pretty high. I bet we've got some good jumpers out there but did you reach the ceiling? I know even I can't do that. So I don't think any of us could compete with the animals I'm about to show you. I think they're all way better jumpers than we are, even if you're a really great jumper for a person. So our first choice for our high jump competitors is, anybody know what animal this is? I'll give you a second to shout it out if you want. It's a puma, but if you said cougar or mountain lion, that's correct too, because those are all the same um, name for the, sorry, different names for the same animal. So we have pumas at the St. Louis Zoo. We actually have a brother and a sister named Echo and Coda, and they live together at the zoo. So they're one possibility for the highest jumper. 
And then our next option is another animal we have at the St. Louis Zoo, a red kangaroo. And they kind of have to be good jumpers because they have those short front legs. They can't really walk on all four legs and they don't have good legs for walking or good feet for walking in the back. So they kind of have to jump, but we're gonna find out how high they jump. And then our last choice, we had to blow this critter up much bigger than it is in real life. I don't know if you can tell, but that's a flea. That's what they look at, like under a microscope basically. Um, so you guys can kind of think about which your guess is and either put it in the chat or just say out of those three animals, a puma, a kangaroo, and a flea, which one you think would win the high jump? Oh, I see some people are guessing, awesome. And it looks like I might be frozen for some people. That might be your internet connection. I apologize that that happens. This session will be recorded, so you can always check it out if you're having um, problems listening in. You can always check it out later when it goes up on the website. All right, so the winner, not the winner, the bronze medal in the high jump goes to the kangaroo. That surprised me, actually. I thought they were, I mean, they are really good jumpers, but I thought they might be the best but they can jump over my head. So five to 10 feet. So that's even taller, I mean, even higher than like a giant basketball player. They can jump that high, which means that the puma and the flea must be really good jumpers. So our silver medal goes to the puma. They can jump up to about 18 feet up in the air, which is like the second story of a building. So they could jump onto your roof if you have a two-story house. And then, believe it or not, the winner is that little tiny flea. Now, they might not be able to jump to the second story of a house, but they're so tiny. So for their size, they are the best jumpers. They can jump up to 200 times their own size, which would be like if a person could jump to the top of the St. Louis Gateway Arch, if standing on the ground, jumping all the way to the top of the arch. That's pretty amazing jumping. So that's why the fleas win the gold medal. And if you're not from St. Louis, then you can look up the Gateway Arch to find out how tall it is and how amazing that feat is. All right, our next category is to see who's the strongest animals, kind of like weightlifting. And we're gonna have three choices there again. Our first choice, can you tell what animal that is carrying the leaf? It's a leaf cutter ant. I bet some of you guessed that. And the cool thing, I don't know if you can see in this picture, is that they lift things with their mouths. So their strength is lifting with their mouth. That's our first choice. And our second choice is an animal I bet you were thinking of when you were thinking of strong animals, an elephant. This is a picture of one of our Asian elephants that we have at the St. Louis Zoo. And what's interesting about them is they don't really lift things too much with their mouth, they use that trunk. And you might think the trunk is just their nose, but it's actually more like a combination of their nose and their upper lip. So they lift things with this space right here. So if you wanna try a funny trick at home, if you have a pen or a crayon or a pencil handy, or you can try this later, try sticking it up on your upper lip and holding it between your nose and your lip. I'm gonna do it and look really silly for you guys. Ready? Oh, it didn't even stay. There we go, that's about all I can lift with my nose and my upper lip, but I bet the elephant is much better at it. And then our third creature is a dung beetle. Now I wonder if you guys know what dung is. If you wanna guess, either say it out loud or put it in the chat and I'll tell you. All right, oh, somebody put it in the chat. You are exactly right. Dung is another word for poop. And that's what this ball in this picture is made up of poop because dung beetles use poop for food and some kinds of dung beetles even use it for their shelter or to lay their eggs in. Uh, so, and they're pushing this, these balls of dung around. So they are pretty strong and we're gonna see if you think they're the strongest. So I'm gonna show you our three choices again. We have the leaf cutter ant, the elephant, or the dung beetle. And I'm gonna reveal the answers. All right, so the strongest animal or the third strongest animal, I'm sorry, is the elephant. Again, they are pretty darn strong because they can lift all that stuff with their trunk. They can actually lift the biggest things of all of these animals I'm showing you, 
but they're also big. So for their size, they're not the strongest, but they can lift as much as like a small car with their trunks. That's how strong their trunks are, which is amazing. And then the silver medal goes to that leaf cutter ant because they can lift up to 50 times their own weight with their mouth. They, so that would be like if you lifted up two whole classrooms of kids. I know I can't do that even kid-sized people, but the leaf cutter ant can lift that much, which means that the dung beetle is our gold medal winner. They can lift up or move at least up to a thousand times their own size, which would be like if we could push around six double-decker buses full of people. I can't even believe it's possible for something so small to push that much weight um, for their size. Again, they can't actually push six double-decker buses, but for their size, that's how much they can move around. Aren't animals kind of amazing? All right, and now we are gonna go with our last category, and this is the one where you guys get to be the judges, so hopefully you're really listening closely. So I'm going to tell you about these animals, um, and we're going to decide who has the best armor or defenses, okay? So I'll tell you a little bit about them, and then you guys will get to vote with the poll, and you'll decide who wins the gold medal. So our first choice here is a southern three-banded armadillo, um, and we have these at the St. Louis Zoo. You might have them near your house. They're starting, not these kind of armadillos, but armadillos in general are starting to come up to Missouri. Um, there are lots of armadillos in places like Texas and things like that. Um, but this particular kind of armadillo is super cool because like all armadillos, they have these bony plates that cover their, uh, their bodies to protect them. But these guys can curl up into a perfect little ball and they're plates on their head and the plates on their tail tuck in beside each other so that there are no gaps. It's a perfect circular ball and there are no soft spots for predators to get to. So that's one choice, the three-banded armadillo. And this is another really cool creature we have at the St. Louis Zoo. It's called an echidna. Isn't that kind of a funny word? Um, and they have these spiky spines all over their backs and sides, and they can curl up into a ball too so that the spines are pointing out. Not a perfect ball like the three-banded armadillo, but they can curl up and make sure those spikes are out to protect them from predators. And then our last choice is an animal that I bet a lot of you might have around your homes. It's called a box turtle. And like all turtles, they have those nice hard shells to protect their bodies, but box turtles are pretty special. They can not only tuck in their heads and their arms and their legs inside their shell, but their shell is hinged so it can kind of close up and there are no spaces. So kind of like that armadillo, they can close up and protect themselves. So I'm gonna show you our three choices again, and Kelsey's gonna put up the poll, and you guys can decide which one you think has the best armor. And I'll tell you the letters again so you know which it is, and I'll try to hold them up. So the top choice is A for the armadillo that can curl up into a ball with its bony plates. The middle choice is E for the echidna with its spiny spikes. And the bottom choice is T for turtle with its hinged shell that it can close up. So you guys can go ahead and vote in the poll and I'll give you a five second countdown in just a moment. Um, so get your, get your votes in while you can. Oh, I see some people putting their votes in the chat. That's fine too. All right, so I'm gonna count down from five, four, three, two, one. All right, and we're gonna see who you guys voted for. I have to get my pictures back out so I can put them on the podium. I'm gonna see who the winner is of the best defenses. Oh, it's really, really close actually, but you guys picked, I'm gonna start with the gold this time so I can reveal the winner, the Southern Three-Banded Armadillo. That would have been my pick too, actually, guys. It's one of my favorite creatures. I think they're amazing and they're really, really, really cute. Um, the silver medal go that you guys chose goes to the turtle, the box turtle. So we're gonna give that the silver. I think all of these are excellent choices, so I don't think you could really go wrong. 
wants to fall down off my stand. And then the bronze medal goes to that spiny echidna. And something really cool about echidnas that I forgot to tell you guys is they are mammals, which are animals that have fur and feed their babies milk. But one thing that's cool about echidnas that is not true of most mammals is that they lay eggs. Most mammals, the babies just come straight out as a baby from the mom, um, but echidnas lay eggs and then the baby echidnas hatch out of those eggs. So I think that's a really, really cool thing about echidnas. Um, so that is all of our events. We've given out all of our gold medals. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the Q&A and I will try to answer them. I'm trying to see if there's anything I'm missing. I know sometimes it's hard to type questions when you're when you're uh, still learning your letters and everything. So um, you can also ask your grownups to email any questions um, to I believe it's animal questions at st at stlzoo.org. Um, I think our final slide will show that. And uh, we have one last poll actually while we're gathering questions too that we can go ahead and put up. We would like to see if you guys enjoyed today's webinar. Um, so if you could answer that poll, that would be super helpful to us um, so that we know if we're doing a good job with these and if you wanna see more. Oh, it looks like somebody wants to know, I don't know if it's a, my favorite animal or my, fa I did say my favorite or my choice for the best defenses would be the armadillo, but my very favorite animal, it really depends on the day and what I'm seeing, but I usually go with the sea otter because I just think they're really cool creatures. Um, they're really adorable. And I think they're, they're way they, um, are playful is really neat. And I also got to kayak one time in California and see from a distance some sea otters in real life. And that was amazing. Oh, and can one of the animals swim? Um, of the animals that I pointed out today, obviously that marlin can swim. Um, I believe that any of the ones I have up on the podium right now do not actually swim. That's an actually an interesting animal fact about box turtles. Um, usually when we call something a turtle, it's an animal or a turtle that lives in the water, um, but box turtles are not. They're technically tortoises, which are uh, turtles that live or live on land, sort of shelled creatures that live on land. So that's kind of a funny thing. So if the word turtle would make you think that they like to swim, but box turtles actually don't. All right, oh, and somebody likes sea otters too. Yeah, there are so many cool animals out there, it's really hard to decide. All right, again, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to um, submit them to the questions email. Um, and I think we just need to get that last poll up and then we'll be done with our webinar for today. Ah, here it is, perfect. So I'm gonna read out the choices for you um, in case you need a little help. It says, how much did you enjoy today's program? The top choice is not at all. The second choice is not too much. The middle choice is somewhat. The a second from the bottom is a lot. And the last choice is we loved it. So whatever you thought of today's webinar, please be honest and put it right in there. We definitely wanna know. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, and I think that takes care of everything. I appreciate you guys all taking time out of your day to learn some more about our cool animals.